Hey Fitzy here, back out again with another one. I got my silo side back in the shop again. On this one now, I'm going to show you how I made door bottoms. These never came with sections on the lower side of the doors, so I sat down and made a set of bottoms for them. You can buy them, but I made them. Stick around. Alright, let's get started. Um, on this, this is my side by side here now, and what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to make a set of door bottoms for it. I'm going to go over everything here now. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I've done a video on making of the windshield frame for this and making of the roof. Um, that's made from a old roof off a car, and that is um, locker doors, made from locker doors. So check it out, the link will be in the description below. I got a wiper motor off the back of a uh, import car, the back window. That's what I got rigged up on that there. Of course the roof. I went and also made a uh, airfoil for the back of it because where she's fully open on the back side, just deflects the air off the top. and keeps dust from inside the cab. Now, that was one thing we found. Uh, we're talking about dust. If you look down here, there's a large hole here. We were getting a lot of dust, heavy dust down low in the machine coming off the front tires. I've after upgraded the tires now from a 27 to a 30 inch tire. So now it's gonna need more so again. Dirt and everything comes back and flies in here. I don't know why these were designed this way. I don't know. I don't know why that wasn't fully enclosed. But what we're gonna do here today is we're going to make a complete bottom for the doors over here. I'm gonna do this side first. I'm gonna make this side here. Make a piece to fit in there that will uh, mount to the door frame itself. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to make that out of steel, same as I did the roof. I'm going to rock guard it, same as I did the rest of it. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here that I usually don't do is I'm going to make a template. Well, I already went ahead and made the template. This is it here. I'll show you how this goes now. I'm going to uh, get into this. This will mount here like so and then the door it'll be bolted to the door like so that'll be mounted to the top side of the door here and it'll swing with the door and then that'll be set up like that there a lot of these you buy uh aftermarket ones are mounted this way and then they got lines coming up from i'm going to do something a little bit different on it um i kind of like the lines on the way the machine is done now uh where's the two right here you can see the way this goes it fades out it's like there's two edges that fade out what i'm going to do is i have a little line here that comes up i'm going to fade that back to the door i got to put some strength in it that's one of the keys to this here you can make a frame and do all that type of stuff i'm going to make the panel but i'm going to make the panel strong by just using the metal that's on the piece of steel itself just probably putting a few bends in it folding over a few edges just to give it more strength like just cutting out a flat piece of steel here and putting it in there is going to be too wobbly. So you've got to add strength to the edge of it. You could probably weld braces and everything on it. But uh, the easiest thing to do is to stick with the metal and uh, just fall over the edges all the way around it. And then put a couple of bends in it and Bob's your uncle. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start uh, marking that out and cutting it out. All I'm going to use, this is all shelving I picked up a little while ago. Picked up a full truckload of it. I'm going to cut a piece out of that. I'm pretty sure this is 18 gauge steel. I'll double check that there now. 18 gauge right there. There's a bit of paint and everything on this here, but as you can see, it fits up into the 18 gauge section there. So that's what it is, 18 gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna mark out that panel and start cutting it out. Now I got my cardboard template laid out on this here. What I want to do is, this is the size of the panel that I'm making. But I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can have something to fold over on. So I'm going to raise it up a bit so I got something to fold up. And then I'm just going to mark it along here, like so. Now, up on top, I noticed I had to raise it up a bit, it wasn't enough on a template. I need to add some to the template, so I'll do that now before it does anything else. 
this will be just a rough mark out. Now you can see I got something marked out there. I'll take a straight edge now and I'll sharpen up these lines. So here I got everything marked out. Up here is where I raised it up a bit because the template wasn't big enough. So I just got a line drawn through the old line and marked it up a small bit higher. And I went around and I went sharpened up all the lines all the way around. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back again and I'm going to go on the outside edge about 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. I'm put another line all the way right around the whole thing 3 eighths of an inch and that will be my rolled edge. So here as you can see now I've got a line marked all the way around about 3 eighths of an inch all the way around it. So that's what I'll do is I'll go back now and I'm going to cut all this out and that will be the line I'll cut it on and I'll fold it back to this panel here, to that section there. So I'm going to start cutting it out now. Now I got that all cut out, now you can see the line that comes back here. Now the trick with this, all these edges got to be folded over. So what I got to do now is I got to go around and mark all these here and cut them at an angle. All I do on corners, anytime you come to a corner, it doesn't matter what size corners like this here, usually all I ever do is I'll just turn around and I'll mark that that way and cut that clean off that way. That way when the panel folds over, it's not going to fold into itself. Like right here, if you just cut that in and start folding this over, it's going to actually want to fold into itself and to be a high spot here. So I'll cut this one here on a bit of an angle because it's such a small angle. But this one here, I'll cut directly across. I'll go ahead and mark them now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see here, here and here I got it marked. Because that's an inside corner so that's going, to, that's going to want to fold away from itself. These are outside corners. So all I'm going to do now is where I got that marked, I'm just going to cut it off. So as you can see here, I cut it here, and I cut it here, and I cut it there. So now I can just fold that edge over, fold that other edge over, fold this edge over. I'm going to go ahead now and cut the rest of them. So I went ahead and I trimmed them all up, as you can see, all the way around. And that one just cut straight. And then I marked the corners because the mistake I made here now is that I got all my lines on this way here so I can fold it this way. But the problem with it is, this is the way the door goes on, i got to fold it this way because I want the lip on the inside of the door. So i got to fold this all over this way. So i got to go ahead now and i go ahead and mark all this over on this side. That's why I marked them little marks there. You see them there? So I'll use this as my straight edge and I'll just put pencil marks from there to that point, to that point, and, and so on down through here. And you can see like a little mark i got put there and I'll mark all them up. And that way i got my scribe lines on the inside. Now I went ahead and I got them all marked on the other side, so now I marked them both sides. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm to, there's an edge here. I'm going to clean up this edge right along here where I cut it with the grinder. And I'm going to flip it over here and I'm going to grind back this much of this here. Because the problem you're going to have is when you fold this over, you're going to be pounding on this lip. And you're going to have it, it's going to crack and it's going to leave metal or paint down inside the cracks in the low spots and stuff like that. So it's going to be hard to, to clean up after the fact. So the best thing to do now is I'll go around and I'll come back in about three quarters of an inch or so and I'll grind this all off and remove all the paint from this side. I'll leave it on this side here for protection so when I fold it over it's got some paint down inside of it.
All right, I got them all grinded down, back three quarters of an inch, and the edge over here is grinded off. Uh, quick little tip here. When you're grinding off uh, metal like this here, the blade always spins this way, okay? Whatever way the blade is spinning, make sure the blade is spinning off the metal, okay? If you spin it this way here, you're spinning onto the metal, and it will hook. So spin it off the metal when you're grinding metal on an edge, like this here. Because if you go this way, what ends up happening is this here. Should end up hooking like that, and it can be pretty dangerous. I still catch myself every now and again from time to time doing it. But every time you're doing it, when the, when the wheel is spinning, make sure you're you're spinning off the metal and not onto the metal. Anyway, next step now is going falling over the edges. A lot of you have seen this piece of I beam. I have this one and I have that one. I do a lot of work on them. It's just a simple little tool I have kicking around um, to have them around. A lot of you have asked me the size of these. So I'm going to put it in a video here now. The overall length is uh, 51 and a half inches. The top on this one here is about a little less than three, about three and a quarter. And the height is six inches. This one over here, this one here is six inches wide, six inches high, and then about seven and a half inches long. As you can see, it's just chopped off. I never got the fancy. I never made it to fit anything particular. It's just that I wanted it because you've seen in a lot of my videos, I clamp stuff to this and you can move it around on the bench and all different shapes and everything. You can hammer on the corners and whatnot. It's basically it's a big dolly for me and a clamping device, right? But I figured uh, a lot of you have asked about them two pieces of steel, so I figured I'd just show you. I want to send, uh, take a quick little minute to uh, send out a thank you to Jack Gatherall at The Ridge. Uh, these guys are a local store that sell abrasives. Uh, he turned around and asked me to give these a few tries. These are real cheap ones, a uh, dollar each they are. I, I bought the Norton ones off them. These here are two dollars each and are, they're always good anyway. They're fantastic, right? But for anybody, got flap wheels, they got all kinds of abrasives and everything. There, there it is there. Uh, he asked me to give these a try. I'm pretty pleased with them. Uh, they're not half bad. For the price of them, I can compare these. I've used these here. These are a cheap line of grinding disc, 24 grit. Uh, I've used Canadian Tire ones, and I've used uh, Prince's Auto ones. And they're the cheapest place to get them. And you can't, they're more than a dollar at them places. These are a dollar each. So, and on par, these here are equal to or better than either one of their grinding discs. Uh, I like them... Uh, a lot better than the Prince's Auto ones. The Prince's Auto ones got a line in the middle. I don't like them. They're cut through the middle, so you can't cut them down. And these here are pretty solid. But So I was pretty impre impressed with them because I, I'm not one for cheap, really cheap stuff. And I thought these were not going to be that good. But uh, no, they are pretty good. So a little shout out to The Ridge and Jack Gatherall. Now, this is where we're going to start giving strength to the steel. As you can see, this is pretty flimsy and whatnot on this now. It's pretty sturdy where it's 18 gauge, but I want to give the edge a strength. And also, I want to have it half thick for when I put the rubber seal on it. I'll get into that one later. But as you can see here, all I got done is I got the edge of the metal put marked on the edge of the angle iron. And or on, on the I beam. And then I got a piece of angle iron clamped down to the top of it and I clamped it in the middle because this is going to want to spring up and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hammer this up on a 90 for the first step. So I'll go ahead and hammer that up there now.
Anytime you're folding up an edge, don't bring it all the way up too fast. Go by halfway and go from there because when you bring it up, you're stretching the metal farther down and it ends up warping everything up. So just take your time bending it up. Got the lip folded over. Got the line through there now. There's a lot of strength in that section there now. Up here, up here. Right? There's a lot of strength there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer that flat. So when you hammer this flat, you're going to be hitting this inside piece here. So you're going to want to protect that. And what I do with that, I'll take an old yardstick and I'll just put it there to start it off. Because usually the first part of it, it'll want to roll around on you. So what I'll do now is I'll clamp that on there. And I'll just hammer that right onto the yardstick. Make sure I'm in off the edge of the the eye beam now, because if you're out past the edge of the eye beam, you'll push it down past it. This process could be used for a number of things, uh, like even making like little small gas tank doors, making panels. Or anything at all. Just so happens that uh, I'm making it for doors for a uh, side by side. I'll remove the yard stick. And I'll just take something there to put there to hold it steady for myself. Not very much scripts there somewhere. All I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll hammer it flat. left with a nice little rolled edge and on the outside you don't have a sharp edge or nothing so if it's, if it's sticking out because this panel is going to be open on the thing and the machine so you won't cut yourself on it and you've got lots of strength there now and all you're doing is rolling over the metal on the edge so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go work my way around and roll each edge all the way around do you remember how I cut this directly across this way here well this is what it looks like when it's folded it over Folds in right nice stuff. That was a straight edge there and a straight edge there. They be overlapped. Now I got a nice cornered edge on it. 
that I'm gonna I'm gonna round out these edges anyway because this seal won't fit on it's gonna be a half round corner on it. But uh, I got it rolled over on the edge there now. So I figured I'd just show you this. And now the last one now, and I just want to point out that sometimes you got like the rolled edges. All I've been doing is just putting it on top of it, right over the rolled edges. Not too concerned about it. As long as I got a straight edge for that to come off of, still take to it. So I need a short edge, so the last one I'm going to wing it. There we go. It's all folded over. Got a sprint adding to that there. Going along there. Along there and along there. But now the problem we got is this here. We still want to do this type of thing. So I'm going to but what I'm going to do here now is right here. I'm going to go around the grinder now and round all these edges off. Okay, I went ahead and I taped up a lot of things so I wouldn't be scratching it up and whatnot because you may have to trim this up, round the edges out a bit better or fit it up or whatnot, whatnot because sometimes when you roll over the edges, uh, you roll them over not enough or whatnot, but uh, we're hoping that is going to fit. So I'm going to go for a test fit now, see how it lines up. I'm pleased with that. Now that I got that figured out, that it's uh, going to fit there look decent. My next step is here now is I got to give you some strength through the middle of this door, as you can see, right? Now I'm going to show you something here now. Right here, we got a body line that comes up here and stops on this thing. It's hard to see with the uh, tape on it, but it stops here. This is a body line that comes up and it falls in. This this edge here and this edge here, this is in farther than this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step it in here. And I'm going to have it sort of flows along with this edge here. So this will actually come up and then go through the door. But if you look. Where's he to? I'm back here on this edge. Back here, I know this is a lot on this vehicle. See the way this edge goes? It's wide here and then it fades out. It's like that on the whole machine everywhere, right? Everywhere you look, you see little edges here like fade out. And then it goes wide again. And so it's sort of a style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point back here. I think it's this one here. And I'm going to go up to the two points and I'm going to put a bend in it and fold it and step it in and go down so that it flows with this piece here. I'm going to run a bend here going back to this one here. There you go. Bend from there to there. And I'm going to put another bend from there to there in the opposite direction. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a bend from here back to this one here. And I'm also going to put a little small bend down here on the very bottom edge to give the bottom lip a little bit of strength as well because this here is still going to want to move a bit and it'll all flow with the machine the way it's done. Because a lot of these I see are bent this way and I don't, I don't like the look of them, right? So I'm going to bend them through here. I'm going to make my first bend here, second bend here, and I'm going to put this one in and after. And then I'm going to put another one in here. These are just very slight bends I'm putting in them because the panel doesn't fit flat on the top edge. It kind of like when you're looking at it this way here, when you put it on the door skin, the top kind of tips in. It's like, it's not straight up and down. It tips in a small bit on the top, the bolt of the door. So what I'm going to do now is turn it upside down and go over in the, the brake. And set this up on the set, on the bottom, bottom one here. Set this up on the bottom one here. And then come over here on the bottom one here. I think it is. Let me double check this now. Oh, it's on top one. On top one. It's on top one. And then I'll uh, I'll make the bend there, and then I'll flip it over and bend it back the other way. 
because I want this to tip in this bottom lip to tip inwards. So yes, it is the top one. Some aggressive bends in this because it's going to end up taking them out. And you fold it back the other way. I'll see if I'm going to fade that off to there. Run that to there. Here you're left with a nice solid little bead going back down through her, and it gives it strength now to the panel. The panel, the panel can't bend anymore. That's all I'm doing with this is bending it. So I'll put another one on the top side here now, right here. Tip it in, I'm gonna run that down to there. This is all guesswork. I played around with this and size up a few things. That's a very subtle one there. Now it just fades out. That'll give that more strength again. Now I'm going to fold the bottom lip in on this. All I'm going to do here is run it from these two points here on the outer edge and just tip that in. That's it. Now I'll tweak this as I need to be. Now you can actually see I got a solid here. There's no welding involved in it, no braces. All it is is just bends. I'm going to test it in place. See how it fits. You can see it steps in here now and it flows along with this, this body down here. Got a nice seam there. It's a bit tight there. As I come back to the back side here, I got an issue back here. As you can see back here, it's kind of hard to see, just the bottom corner edge. It's touching up here. i got to cut this on a bit of an angle this year, so I'm going to lose that inner lip on that, which is fine. It's, uh, I got, as long as it keeps the structure on the lower sides, I'm happy with it. I, you can sit down and fold it back and refold in again, but I'm just going to trim it off. That's all I'm going to do, because there's a rubber seal going to be going along this anyway. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it. So you see this point here? i got to come up and come in here a small bit and cut it. Uh, up to a point there and then cut it at an angle So here's where she's rubbing is right here. This is out too far. I need to cut this down now You can sit down here now And you can fold this back and trim this back and beat this over again, and I can guarantee you You're gonna end up making a mess here. This is all gonna be beat up because this here is already Given strength is already stretched right on this rolled edge. So when you try to straighten it up again, it's going to be all stretched and it's going to distort all this. And you got to try to fold it all over again. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop the entire section off and remove the inner lip right here. Remove this inner lip. And if I want to, then I'll just I, if I want to, I'll weld a new lip on it. I don't think I'm going to bother with it because it's only a small section. It'd be different if it was down here somewhere it was rubbing because I'm concerned about this lip here and up here as well. And on these four front ones, these large ones, these smaller ones. Uh, on the ends, I think I can get away with it. So I'm just going to trim it off and, and just eliminate this all together and get it fitting good. Now here's the piece I cut off and the angle where I cut it off here on the back side here. Now if you wanted to, you can make another strip up this wide there and you can put it in place there and weld it along that edge there and grind it and dress it if you want, but I'm not going to bother with it because there's only a small area there and there's a rubber seal going to be going over this anyway, so that's going to be fine. I'm going to test fit that now. There you go. That's a better fit there. 
I ended up cutting the back off it here as well. Right here on the top side as well and removing that lip again there as well because this was out too far as well. So like when I rolled the edge, I never rolled enough on it to roll it over. But at this section here, this will be fine with this here. If you want to, you can go ahead and weld a lip on the inside of that. I've covered it in a number of other videos how I weld the lips on. I just put a strip on it and weld it on. But I'm not going to bother on this one here. So now it's time to do a test fit on the seal. This is the seal I'm using. Okay. What is it and what I come off of? This is an aftermarket seal. Uh, if you look at it, it's only about, what's the measurements on it? There's the size there. You can guesstimate it from that. Sorry for your metric, guys. This is something I had upstairs in the attic. And it's got a, a, an inside lip. I wanted this on it. You can get something that you could glue on. But I think it's going to come off. I wanted something that would be strong and stay on the door. And uh, can take a bit of a pounding. And... Uh, so this is what I found upstairs. It's a nice little seal. I'd say if you looked it up online, there's a lot of seal companies. You can probably uh, identify it, get the proper name on it, and you can order it in. I just had some here. All I'm doing is I'm going to start up on the top corner. Put the rubber seal on the inside. Now this is not going to be like seal off perfect. This is more or less for rattles and uh, whatnot. So I'm just going to put it on over. And all it does, it just slips on over the metal, like so. I will urethane this on after the fact. I just think on an, uh, an off-road vehicle, having just a glued on seal, I don't think it's going to stay there. So, something like this is much better. It's nice to have a seal that's on there that stays on there on its own. It doesn't need any help or any glues or anything. It doesn't stay on its own, but I'm going to glue it on to be safe. So this is how the seal goes on. It just goes on over the lip edge, all the way around, fits nice and tight. Right. Now it's got a little bit of a seal on the inside of it there. All I'm concerned about is keeping it from rattling. This is going to keep most of the dust out. You'll never keep the dust out of all these rigs, but that's just it. But I like this type of seal, as you can see. That's what it is. You just open up this edge here, this lip, and that slides on over your edge of your metal or so. Like that, see? And the outside of it then, it's got a nice little clean little edge to go along it, dressed edge. Just to tidy up the edge of the door. So I'm going to go over and lay that in place now. There it is, just laid in place. You see the way it kicks up and how the belt line goes. Lift it up a bit, there you go. It's down along the edge there. And up there. Look at it on the inside. Don't look half bad, this fits pretty good. So now that I got that all made and figured out and where it's got to go, next thing to do now is I got to mount it to the door frame. So I'm going to strip apart the door now and get that ready to mount to this here. So all I went and did is I removed the outer skin off it, which is there on the floor there now. Uh, shed these on her as well. Um, they were in my way of the elbow. They mounts right here on the door. I don't know why they're there, but I'm leaving them off this time. But that, that, there's, that just screws on. A couple of screws, little Torx tip screws, screws on there, and one bolt holds it on. That's the screws there. All right, just remove them, it's just a regular sheet metal style screw. So, what I'm planning on doing here now is I have points here. I got one here, one here, one here, and one here, plus these two back bolts here, which are the actual hinge that I'll drill out because the piece of metal I got made up comes up into here. 
I made it up. This is the reason why I said I wanted a bit higher because of this one particular hole here. I want to take this one in and I'll go along here and I think I'll uh, and I'll take in this hole here or this one here. I'm not quite sure yet. But anyway, I'll lay it in place and fit it in that thing and I'll clamp it under this here and do a test fit on it. Okay, I played around with it, tweaked it here, and bent it out, and tweaked it here, and, you know, got it all fitting. I'm happy where it's to there now. As you can see, I just got a clamp to the bottom of the door here. And you can open the door, and the door opens. And that's the way it'll be. It'll seal up along that there. And then you can just close the door. Now, she's a bit tight in here now because I got to get go these bolts, and I got to drill them out. To tuck that in, so there's a bit of a strain on it there. And when the bolts, and I guess it all bolted together, it'll hold tight, right? So, but it closes, and the bottom of the door is solid. Right. So I'm going to mark all these holes here now. Then I'm going to put it and uh, take it off and drill the holes and bolt it together. You see it there? I got points marked. So all I'm going to do is just drill them out with a one-eight hole drill bit first. So there it is, bolted in place. All I've done is I put a couple of bolts and I'm gonna go pick up some nice hardware for that. Just regular nuts and bolts I'm gonna put in it. And then on the inside here, you can see that I took in the hinge and bolted on the hinge too, and a bolt there, and a bolt there, and a bolt there. And uh, opens and closes good. Right. A little minor adjustments to do on it. All right, I got that one done. I went ahead then and I made a second one. So now I got two of them. And they came out, that other one came out just as good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn around and I'm going to prep this for paint. Uh, and first thing I'm going to do to, before I paint it is I'm going to put this rock guard on it from Proform. I spray it on her because that's what I got on all the rest of the machine up on the roof and on the windshield frame. I like the textured look. Uh, you could, you know, sand these and paint them, powder coat them, whatever you would like to do with them. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do with these, right? All I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to get my uh, oscillator over here. And I'm going to sand these 100 and prep this. That'll be good enough for the gravel guard, right? I'm not getting into getting any fancy paint or anything on this because uh, I use this rig and, you know, I go through a lot of trees and stuff like that. And so if it puts any money into the, this paintwork, I'm on something that I can easily just give it a quick flick every now and again, give it a freshen up. Because I'm also going to sit now, after I does this here, as you can see here, I just gravel guarded the windshield frame. And you can see there's some spots on it here now that are starting to come through. And that's because that's all is on is, is the uh, the gravel guard, right? The finish and everything is on it there. So I'm going to take this south off and take the roof off. And I'm going to paint the bowl of it along with the doors, freshen it up uh, with a coat of satin black. So uh, I'm going to go ahead now and prep these and uh, get them ready for uh, the gravel guard. Now by rights, you should uh, probably spray an epoxy 
or H primer on the bare metal. I'm not going to do that. I just this is something I'm going to paint these every year because I'm going to scratch them up. And I'll probably end up probably beat one of them up anyway. So I'm just doing a quick little job on these now, making these look uh, presentable looking. You know, it all depends on how the you want to be. And, uh, they need to have powder coated. Base clear right on. And this is uh, what I'm after. I like the texture though. Okay, I got these left out in the bake oven to dry. They're pretty good there now. I'm going to leave these dry because they got the gravel guard going on. I went ahead then, I stripped off the roof, took the roof off us, and scuffed all that down with a scotch pad. And got that all prepped inside and out, ready to be painted, and did the same thing in here with the windshield frame. Got this all prepped. There's all I sand it was. Uh, a red scotch pad, just rubbed it up a bit, dug in around the corners and whatnot, just rubbed it all up because I want to put paint on these here. I'm probably going to end up painting these once a year just for the sake of it because I use this year round and you can see it's starting to have rust stains and some little small spots starting to come through. That's to be expected, it's all made of steel and you can do what you like with it and it's, uh, if you abuse stuff it's going to come back to you. But there she is there, all the pieces hauled off her. So I'm going to go ahead now and get these ready to be painted. So I have everything here up on the, up on the door. I'm getting ready now to give it a quick flick. Uh, I'm not going to worry about dust and dirt and anything like that because this is a textured finish on it. And, I, you know, it's it's an off-road vehicle. It's just something I just want to freshen it up and put some protection over it more than anything else. I'm not too concerned about, uh, you know, having perfections only sat in black going on it. So I want to get all this painted now before I actually get the doors installed. I've been meaning to do this a while now, so I'm taking the time now to do it. All I'm putting on it is in here. You've seen it before. And I've used it a few times now. It is trim clad, semi-gloss. Uh, I mix it one to one with the automotive thinners. That's all that is. This is the old primer lacquer thinners. That's all that is. I'll mix it one to one with that and I'll spray it out of a um, Developers Tiles tip is on that, it's a 9000 on that bus now it's, um, That's just my old paint gun I had from years ago And I'll make do with it uh, You can probably use a siphon fed gun If you want to, or a gravity fed, sorry Gravity fed gun This is not uh, painting one on one, this is butchery one on one <laughs> I'm just trying to get some protection on this here now So I'm going to go ahead and mix up that paint there now Got a good breeze here today blowing this way, which is good, blowing it into the trees. But uh, I'm not wearing a mask or nothing, you should wear a mask when you're at this. I'm just out here by the door doing this, just trying to get it done.
And here you have it. I got three coats put on them. Let it dry now. Just some protection there to keep it. I'll take them off every year and give them a quick flick. The panel, door panels put in here. Let them dry overnight now and I can put it all back together. I got her all back together again. Nice finish on it now. You can actually touch it. It's been 24 hours. I got the door bottoms on them with the seals on them. All the way around. Looks good. Doors opens and closes good. Okay. The hardware, I was uh, going around, I wanted to get some uh, like uh, carriage head bolts or you know like smooth top screws or whatever you want to call them. But I, I couldn't find anything up around the house so I just went and picked up new you know 516 bolts and put it in. That's good enough for me. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. Looks the part there. And hopefully that'll keep all the dust in from these tires. Because the problem I had before is I used to get a build up of dust, dirt and everything coming in underneath the door. I don't know why they build the doors like this. They just do it so we got to spend more money on them. <laughs> Here's the other one. Open and closing. That's it for that one. Anyway, simple little tick. As you can see, uh, never did no welding on it. Everything is just bent up and hammer formed and that's it. So I've got a nice little bead in there, bead in there, you can see the shape of it, look. And the bottom, it, and it flows with the machine, as you can see. So I'm pleased with that, I'll be happy with them. Anyway, check out my other videos, one on the windshield and one on the roof. I have the link in the descriptions. Anyway, that's it for that one. I hope the tips were good, and until next time. <laughs>